on occasions that for whatever reason usually involved me being on a golf cart as a kid, I would think about the seemingly infinite nature of the universe. How even after the heat death of the universe, things will still keep on going on pretty much forever. Well, fractals and Julia sets are kind of like that, just far less depressing. Today, I'll be explaining what a Julia set is and how I'll be using it to create some generative art. But first, to understand Julia sets, you have to have some understanding of complex numbers. Complex numbers aren't quite as bad as they sound when you first hear it. A complex number takes the form a plus b times i, where a and b are normal real numbers we all know and love, and i represents the square root of negative one, which is the imaginary number. The last helpful thing to know of complex numbers is that you usually graph it on a 2D plane. The x-axis represents the real part, and the y-axis represents the imaginary part. Onto Julia sets. If we look at the formal definition on Wikipedia, it's overwhelming, but that's really just because mathematicians like to use big and precise words to describe things in kind of complicated ways. So let's simplify it a little bit. We have some function f of z that has some limitations on it, namely, it has to be non-constant, complex, and rational. And then the Julia set is just all the points that we plug into that function that diverge to infinity. Technically, it's just the boundary edge of these points. So um, I'll show a picture later to kind of explain it. But for our purposes, um, we're just using it to make art. So knowing that it's just the boundary of points and not you know all the points that diverge to infinity doesn't really matter for us. So let's look at an example. Here, f of z equals z cubed minus one. Like I said earlier, we can define f of z to be almost anything, and we'll play around with that in the code later. But in this example, the white lines make up the Julia set, so that's the boundary edge, and the colored areas diverge to infinity. You can treat this plot like a normal complex number plane. So the x-axis is the real part, like I said, and the y-axis is the imaginary part. This spot on the graph is what we plug into our equation as our first z. So the middle is 0, 0, we're plugging in 0 plus 0 i. Um, let's say like the right middle part, we're plugging in, let's say 1 plus 0 i. And the color is how long it takes for that equation to get to a certain number. So we can have that cutoff point be whatever we want. Maybe it's like once it hits past 16, we consider that infinity. But as you can probably tell, um, this is a recursive, it's multiplying complex numbers. And calculating this, especially at high resolutions, can be very slow. So it'll be pretty hard for it to work live. Um, usually you'll see like renderings of it that just kind of calculate it once. And you can't like move it around or calculate it in real time. But uh, I have a couple ideas for how we might be able to calculate it in real time and do something with it. All right, enough of the theory, let's start coding. So first up, I wanted to start off with a simple example of f of z equals z squared, get that visualized. And then I have some original ideas I wanna add to make it special and not just like every other um, Julia said visualization that's out there. Um, they all look the exact same, just like different constants and different coloring. But um, let's just start simple for now. All right, so I got the basic code working. So if we check it out, so we iterate over all the x pixels, all the y pixels, calculate the number of iterations, get the square root of it to like accentuate the colors a bit more. And then I use that for the hue, saturation, and brightness, and I draw it each time. So each time I click, it randomizes some with better results than others. I guess one's kind of cool. And yeah, um, now I pretty much need to just work on actually experimenting with it. All right, so it's been two days and I've kind of done a lot. So this was my 3JS implementation. And as you can tell, it's very slow. Um, so I actually did a third implementation using shaders, which I'll show in a second but this was just using normal JavaScript, like a CPU to do it. And this is using the mesh normal material, which I think looks really cool. And yeah, it's pretty cool. You can refresh it every time to get a new one. This might be the implementation I end up going with because um, I'm able to use the mesh normal materials and it looks great as it is. Um, but I also implemented it with normal material and some lights, so let's just check that out. Cool, so here we can see it with the light. So you can see the light's like over here. And again, it looks really cool. But like I said, the issue is you can't animate it because it's too taxing on the CPU. And that gets me to my next implementation using shaders. Let's check that out. It actually runs in real time. However, the coloring looks weird. And if you notice, this is actually inverted 
which is kind of a solution I had that I think makes it look a lot cooler and you get rid of the spikes because, I mean, you still have the spikes. They're just down below, not above, hiding what you can't see. And the coloring still looks awful. So I wanted to test this out now with the not, like the CPU version, just to see what it looks like not animating around. And then I wanna play around with this to make a color scheme that actually looks good. But yeah, this ended up <laughs> taking up a lot more time than I expected it to, but I'm happy with the results. I understand it a lot more now. Um, so yeah, it's kind of cool. It's been <laughs> a few weeks since I last updated, updated you guys. Um, I started full-time work, um, so I haven't really had time, and I was kind of just enjoying the last of my summer, but um, I'm back, and I think it looks pretty cool now. I uh, scrapped the shader implementation again. Um, so this is what I've got. Um, so it randomizes every time I hit space, and I added three light sources. And it's not completely done. I'm still gonna mess around with it, I think a little bit. And then I'm going to actually upload it as an interactive NFT on Hicketnunk. Hicketnunk, however you say it. Um, but like this looks, personally, I love this. It's kind of got like a metallic, glossy look to it um the lights add some interest to it changes every time you press space and yeah i just love the textures on it but yeah i'm gonna come back update you guys when i have it uploaded as an nft and it's kind of it um i'm not really expecting people to buy it but i figured i haven't seen too many things like this on hicket nunk um so i think it'll just be like a cool little example of an interactive thing um that you can mess with on there so this video took me <laughs> way too many months. I got new glasses. My hair grew out from probably a bit longer than this to very long, back to just getting a haircut, so it's short again. Um, th this video is a mess, and I'm sorry for that. I realized that. Um, started work, things got busy. It happens, but um, <laughs> from where I finished the video, I ended up converting it into an NFT that I put on Hicketnunk. So to do that, I pretty much just converted the code into like a little standalone folder that I could zip up and upload to Hicketnunk, and then it just uses it um, as a frame with 3JS and everything, and it works on there, which is really cool. Um, obviously, you can see it on the screen as I'm talking right now. It looks pretty cool. I like it. But yeah, I'm sorry. I haven't posted in a long time, and this video has been in my backlog, and I just haven't touched it because I've had kind of no motivation after work to do anything and I mean yeah I work full-time now it's it's not a bad thing or anything but you know it's hard to find time outside of work to keep doing the things I want to work on like this but um yeah here we are I finished it I have a couple of good ideas still coming up that I just need to sit down take the time to actually make videos for them but if you made it this far thank you and I'll catch you all next time